I was drowning. The powerful undertow at Fire Island had me in its grip. I was being pulled farther and further out to sea. The beach was deserted. The houses along the shore were too far away to hear a cry for help. I was swallowing salt water and gasping for air. I didn't know how to swim. My limbs flailed in a desperate doggy paddle. They were weak and useless against the strong arm of the ocean and I was getting tired. It was a perfect beach day. The sun blossomed with warmth and promise. The breeze blew off the oceans like a lover's kiss. At eight in the morning, my housemates were still asleep. I slipped past the deer nibbling nearby toward the excitement of an entire beach to myself, smiling as if headed for a rendezvous. I stood there on the sand with my arms outstretched, yelling and chanting, Yemaya, Yemaya, here I am, Yemaya. I knew she was an African deity of the ocean, and I thought it only right to chant to her before entering her realm. I waded in, waist deep, and began playing my usual game. As the wave came near, I would jump just beyond the crest of it, then ride its waking waters back to the safety of the shore. It felt like original joy to be lifted up and carried back to the ocean's edge. I was a child once more, flashing, splashing in the cool waters at Coney Island and digging my way to China. I was having so much fun, I hardly noticed that my feet were returning to the sand less and less often. Soon, they weren't touching it at all. The waves kept coming, each one taking me further away. I tried pushing my way back, but the ocean had other ideas. I was 50 feet from dry land now, my orange towel a distant speck. I was drowning, and no one was around to save me. I struggled to keep afloat. The seagulls watched, and the sky stood by. Salt water burned my throat. Each time I coughed, more of its bitterness invaded my mouth. There seemed to be no point to panic, but I knew I couldn't fight much longer. Then the thought came to me, I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to go yet. Suddenly I stopped struggling. I relaxed and surrendered. I stretched my arms out, looked to the sky, and cried out, please take me home. From the middle of the ocean, a huge wave rose up 20 feet in the air and came crashing down on my head. It pushed me deep into the ocean's belly. I rolled through the water like a child tumbling downhill. I thought I would never see the light of day again. When I surfaced, I was closer to the shore, but still unable to touch land. I coughed salt, seawater, and prayers. Once more, I held out my arms, calmed myself, lifted my head, and asked again, please take me all the way home. Another wave, even larger than the last one, rose from the border, water like a monument and fell on me with the force of stone. Sand and salt and sea creatures invaded every part of my body. My lungs threatened to burst. I broke through the water, skin choking and spitting. I was much closer now. I could just about feel the sand touching the tips of my toes. With my last strength, I paddled and stroked against the undercurrent. Finally, I was on solid ground again. I stumbled out of the water, clinging to life in the sweet smell of the morning air. I pulled myself up as best I could, then turned around to face the ocean and whispered, thank you, thank you. Then my legs left me and I collapsed onto the bright sanctuary of my towel. Each year, experienced swimmers drown in the waters of Fire Island, their considerable skills no match for the ancient wits of the ocean. I might have been among those countless names mentioned briefly, then forgotten. 
Instead, I was brought home again. Maybe the ocean mother took pity on me and threw me back like a small fish who still needed to grow. Maybe my ancestors from the Middle Passage rose up from the bones and secrets in the Atlantic Ocean to make sure I lived to tell their stories. Or maybe, like the old folks say, it just wasn't my time. Whatever the reason, I was home again, given a second chance to swim through life differently. I have learned to honor the spirit of the ocean inside me and to be thankful for the blessing of being. I have learned how to go in without going under, when to stroke and when to surrender. I have learned that I am a part of everything, the earth that holds me up, the air that breathes through me, the fire inside my soul, and the water that delivered me from my mother's womb and brought me home again, and I have never been the same. Thank you.